Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to take your beautiful stamped images and foil them. It is so much fun and I'm showing three different methods in today's video. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so for this first card, we're going to be using this Slimline Bold Blossoms rubber stamp. This one's a peel apart, so you can use some images separately, but we're going to use it as a whole background, but on an A2 size card. So I'm using my antistatic powder tool because we're going to be doing some embossing and we don't want any stray embossing flex today. Then I'm inking the background stamp up with a little bit of Versamark sticky ink and once that's done I can go in and stamp it down. Today I picked up the stamp because I wanted to kind of find the perfect placement and I hung it off the side of the card to give a little bit of interest to it. Then I'm using my kind of pressure tool to press it down and make sure that everything transfers. Then I'm going to throw over a layer of my clear heat embossing powder. This is what's going to make the foiling stick. And this just happens to be regular Ranger clear heat embossing powder. I found that clear works a little bit better for me. For some reason it heats up a little bit better, but you can try white as well. Either one is going to work since we're covering it up with foil in a second. So I'm going to heat set that until it's clear and shiny, and then we can go in with our foiling. I'm using a little bit of Gina K's Thermoweb Foil. This is the glimmering gold color, and I love how it shines and has some cool texture to it. All right, now I've struggled cutting down foil forever. Cutting with scissors is a little bit difficult since it's so thin. So I grabbed out my cutting mat here, and I'm using this Cricut Rotary Trimmer, and I absolutely have loved it for cutting down foil. It makes it super easy to just go in, the blade is really nice and sharp, and it cuts with like one pass and barely any effort since it's so thin. So here I was able to go in and cut off any excess foil and get the perfect amount that I needed without the foil kind of buckling and moving on me. So I highly recommend that and that's been great for hot foiling too to cut down excess foil. So I've taken that piece of foil and placed it over top of the image that we just heat embossed and then I'm going to place this into a carrier sheet. You want to use the regular kind of mink carrier sheets. I ran out so I had to use parchment paper with a little bit of printer paper but you'll get better results with the carrier sheet. Then I put this on setting number two. You want it to be just the right amount of heat, but not too much, and I found two was perfect for me, but play around with your machine. If your foil kind of starts rippling and doesn't get perfectly foiled, try turning down the heat. Now here I'm just kind of checking without pulling off the full design, and I ended up placing it right back down and putting it back in through the machine. You can totally do another pass if you'd like to. Here I wanted there to be a little bit more foil on the lines, so I ended up going in a second time, and I loved the result of it. Look at all of that amazing shine, and it's just so cool that you can foil your stamped images like this. So once that was all complete, there ended up being a couple little excess stray pieces of embossing powder. To get those off, I used the mono sand eraser and just lightly erased off those tiny little dots on the edges or wherever they are. It came off really super simply. So then I'm going to go in to color this in using the Bold Blossoms Coordinating Layering Stencil Set. This has three different stencils in it and it perfectly colors in these flowers and leaves. I'm starting off with the first layer and I'm working on the Make Art Station so I can really easily magnet this stencil down to hold it in place. I find that that's super helpful rather than having to use tape for every layer. For my coloring I'm going in with my Simon Hurley Create inks and I'm just going to do a little bit of ink blending with some blending brushes and blending tools. For this first layer I just went in with a little bit of Shooting Star which is my light yellow color. And then to add a little bit of shading, I went in with a foam blending tool that's a little bit smaller and just kind of shaded it in using a little bit of Prom Queen. This was a really great way to add a little bit of depth and dimension to it and step it up a little bit. Then I went in on the smaller little tiny flowers and I wanted to add those colored centers there too, so I used little detail blending tools. These little detail blending tools you can find from either Altenew or Ranger. Ranger's got the sponge ones and Altenew has these cool little blending brushes. Both of them are really great at getting into the small little details. And even for this last layer, I went in with a tiny little bit of Game Over and shaded it in. Now there's a little bit of excess ink that kind of sits on top of the foil, so I kept my stencil on and I'm wiping that off with a paper towel. You want to clean this before you lift off your stencil, that way no ink gets on the white cardstock around your image. I had to learn the hard way the first time. So once you pull that off, you get that beautiful color on top of that amazing shine. So then I can pull in the next stencil, and this is just super easy to line up with those leaves there, and then place down the magnet so we can get started. Here I used just two different green colors. I started off with a little bit of Psyche, which is this kind of light yellow green color. I really love it. Just going in with the Gina K blender brushes and blending that in super simply. 
Then to add a bit of shading, I went in with a little bit of Viper, which is a darker, more earthy green, and started blending it in. Now to add this shading, I start from the center of where the flowers are, and then I move my way out to the leaves. This is going to make it darker from where it overlaps the flower and give it natural shading. So then I'm going to wipe it off the same way to get rid of any excess ink that's on top of the foiling. Then we can lift that off and you have beautiful color there too. There's one last stencil with leaves and I'm going to lay that down and fill it in with a little bit more ink. We ended up separating out these two stencils when we made it with the leaves, just so that there wasn't any super thin lines that could possibly rip on you. We like to make sure your stencils are gonna last you a long time. So to make them more structurally sound, we split that up in two if you're wondering. So there we have our beautiful coloring in on the image. I love how that color looks with the beautiful gold foiled edges. Now, to finish this off, I ended up cutting it out with my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors. I just left a little bit of a white border, and I love these scissors because they spring back out at you, so your hands don't get tired, and you're also able to get into these small little details easily. To finish off the background, I'm going to go in with this Jewel Heist background stamp. I love the kind of the diamond details of this. It's a nice, simple, geometric design. And I'm going to stamp it down using a little bit of bee sting ink on top of a tomato soup card base from Gina K. I absolutely love this color combo together, and it's going to give me a great tone-on-tone -tone background, so it won't distract or stand out too much from the other part of the card, but it's going to give a little bit of extra interest, which really makes it stand out a little bit. Then I'm going to add down the focal point flowers on top of a little bit of foam tape. And then to finish it off, we're going to want a sentiment. For this, I'm going to go into the Sketch Floral stamp set, and I like to use the clear acetate sheet to see which sentiment is going to work best. I ended up using the Hello My Friend, and I love this one. It's my own handwriting, so it's really awesome. I'm going to stamp that down using some black ink, and then clear heat emboss it to finish it off. If you guys know me, you know I love clear heat embossing. It really packs an impact and darkens up that black ink. And here's a closer look at that finished card. I love how easy it was to color in those images with the stencils. And I also think it's amazing that we're able to foil our stamped images like this. It's just so stunning. So for the next card, I'm going in with the same sketch floral stamp set. And this time I'm just going to use some of the flowers. So I'm going to take these three flowers and kind of line them up on my card inside my Misty stamping tool. I'm kind of putting them in a row where the leaves are all at the same height there. And then I'm going to lift up my image once I got it all in place. Then I can use my anti static powder tool again to make sure there's not going to be any stray embossing powders. Then I'm inking this up with a little bit of clear Versamark ink. This is a nice clear sticky ink so it'll hold my embossing powder. I ended up doing this in my Misty just in case if I wanted to stamp it again. I ended up stamping it twice just to make sure that all of the details were captured. Then I can throw over a layer of my clear heat embossing powder tap that off the excess, and then heat set it until it's nice and clear and shiny. It doesn't look like much when it's melted like this, but we can go in and do our foiling, and it's going to really pack a punch. Now for this one, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get my foil ready. I'm starting off with a little bit of the Brutus Monroe foil. I loved this textured purple, and I'm going to make sure that it only covers the flower head. If there's anything that's kind of overlapping on the leaf areas, I want to cut that out. So you'll see I kind of cut a little strategic pattern here to make sure that it's only going to lay over the flower head. And once I've got it set, I can use a little tiny piece of mint tape to hold it in place. The other ones were even a little bit easier. I just went in with that same rotary trimmer, that thing is a lifesaver, and cut down little squares that were just big enough to fit over top of the flowers and not cover the leaves. And I'll link down all the colors that I used in the description box so you guys can find these too. Then I'm going to go in with my rotary trimmer and cut down a larger piece of that green. And this one doesn't matter. This can overlap everything because we want it to just cover the leaves. But since the other ones already have foil on it, it's not going to foil the green, even though they're overlapping. Whatever is on the bottom layer is going to foil with the embossing. So then when that's done going through the machine, we can lift that off. You can see those green leaves are just beautiful. And then when we lift off each flower individually, it's going to give the different color flowered head. I love the effect that this gives with that beautiful shine and how we get a multicolored look with these flowers. And you could do this with so many different types of images. Now to color this in, I went in with kind of the same method that I did with the last one. However, this time I'm just using those little detail blending tools since these are a lot smaller. This is a great alternative if you're not great at watercoloring or lots of other coloring mediums. This can be a really easy way to add color for you. 
I've really fallen in love with these little tiny detail blending tools for doing things like this because it's a really easy way to add tiny color in these little areas and also even add little bits of shading too with these colors. So I was able to go in and add darker yellows and add some shading to that. And then you can even use the side of these little blending tools to go into even smaller areas. It's just super cool and a great way to add simple color. I even went in with this little kind of Altenew blending brush. These go even smaller and went in with all the different leaves to color these in with the greens and shade them all together. To finish off this card, I went in with a little bit of craft cardstock and I'm gonna use the Tim Holtz deckle trimmer to add a little bit of detail around the edge. So I'm trimming this down so it just gives a little bit of border and I like that little deckled edge that that gives. Now to highlight it even a little bit more, I'm going in with my Gur ink, which is my brown, and I'm just going to touch the edges lightly with the blending tool with this to darken them up a little bit and add a little bit more shading and dimension to it. Then I can stamp down my sentiment. I'm just going to stamp down the sentiment that says you are so beautiful and I love the bold boxy look of this. And of course you know me, I'm going to clear heat emboss this so that it's nice and finished for our card. Once that's all done, I love how this looked. That simple coloring method really brought this to life, but I love that the foil colors reflect the colors that are on the flowers as well. It's a super cool and easy way to add multicolored foils. Now I wanted to show you a little bonus example that I didn't really turn into a card before we get into the next one. Here I used the sketched bouquet stamp and I love this background stamp, but I wanted to test how detailed you really could get with this embossing technique. And this stamp has a lot of little lines and details. So I'm following the same exact steps, taking a piece of my stark white cardstock and using my clear sticky Versamark ink and then stamping it down with my pressure tool, throwing over a layer of clear embossing powder, and then we can heat set that until it turns clear and shiny. I find that you don't want to heat set it too much, just right when it turns clear kind of stop heat setting it because you don't want to burn it. Once it gets burned it kind of sinks into the cardstock and you don't want that. You want it to be nice and shiny. For the foiling, I'm going to use this new deco foil Mystic Rainbow color. I love the colors in this foil. It's super bright and bold, and it's not just your average rainbow. I absolutely love how it looks. So I'm going to pull apart one of the sheets, and then we can go in and cut this down. I'm lining up my piece of cardstock and then using that rotary trimmer again to really closely cut to that edge so we don't waste any foil. Then I'll put this in my carrier sheet again and run it right through my mink. This is on the setting two, and for this one I also ran it through two different times. You can run it through once, I don't find that it makes a huge difference either way. So then once I peel that off, you'll see that beautiful shine, and yes, it kept pretty much all the detail. There was one little area where it merged a little bit, but most of those little tiny lines are kept, and there is so much detail in that shine. Now for this last card, I'm using this kind of coordinating stamp set, and this one is called Sentimental Flowers. I love this set, you can see it's very well loved, and I'm gonna use one of these flowers as the main focal image. So I'm stamping down the medium flower using a little bit of my clear sticky ink onto some stark white cardstock, and I'll do the same thing with my leaves. I pulled out three different leaves from the stamp set, and I'm stamping them down using the Versamark ink as well. Then again, we can throw over our layer of clear heat embossing powder, and then we can go in and heat set it until it's nice and clear and shiny. And it's not gonna look much until we start our foiling here. So then I'm pulling in some of the same colors that I used earlier. I happen to love these textured foils. They give that beautiful color, but they also give a little bit of kind of iridescence and texture to the shine too. Super cool. So I'll lay those down over top of the flowers for the pink and the green with the leaves. And then once that's run through, we can peel it off and you get that beautiful shine on top of those detailed images. I love that it captures all those details still, even when you're foiling your images. So then I'm going to go in with a little bit of ink. Here I'm just ink blending it outside of the line because we're going to cut these out. So I'm using a little bit of rosy cheeks and then prom queen to shade in the center. And then I'm going to go in with the leaves and use a little bit of overzealous, which is my brighter green color and then finish it off with a bit of fake plant to add a little bit of shading. I like how quick and easy this one is out of all of them. There was no worrying about staying in the lines or using the detail blending tools because we're gonna end up cutting them out. It took about like one minute, seriously, to, to color all these in. So then I'm gonna go in with my Fisker's Spring Assist scissors again. This makes it super easy to do my fussy cutting because they spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired at all when cutting. And you can get into the tiny little details with this little blade that's on the cutter. 
I highly recommend these. If you struggle with fussy cutting, give them a try. These are game changers. So once those images are all cut out, we can finish off the rest of the card. I'm going to use that same sketched bouquet stamp set, and I'm going to stamp it down using a little bit of fake plant ink onto a green card base. Then I'm using that pressure tool again to make sure that it all stamps really nicely. And then we can go in and lift that off and you'll see that beautiful background. And I just love the depth that, that a simple tone on tone stamping will provide. Then I'm going to add down the leaves behind this flower and situate it how I want it and then adhere it down. Then for the sentiment, I'm going to go in with that same sentimental flower stamp set, kind of figure out what sentiment that I want. And I ended up going with sending hugs. I stamped that down to finish it off, and I just love how easy this one was. Coloring those flowers in was a breeze, and I love that it was still able to capture all of those tiny little details in these stamps with this beautiful foiling. Alright guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did, and leave a comment down below letting me know which of these cards were your favorite. Also down there is a link to the full supplies list, and those links really help support me, so I really appreciate you guys using them. Thank you so much for joining me today to craft, and I'll see you all very soon in another card making and crafting video. Have a great day! Bye!